Now, my guess is that some of you watching this video are contemplating taking the next big step. You've been wedded to your fancy SUV for years because there hasn't been an equivalent electric car good enough to turn your head until now. This is the Audi Q6 e-tron and it's the first time I'm going to get to drive it. So stay tuned to find out why it's big news for us at Electrifying. Also, if you could do us a favor, like and subscribe to the channel and you'll find out when all our videos drop. So why am I so excited by it? Well, the Q6 e-tron isn't a rehash of an old model or an electrified version of a petrol car. It's all brand new, designed from the ground up to be an EV. Uh, it fits in between the Q4 and the Q8, quite literally, which makes sense if you think about it. It will share its hardware with a few other fancy electric cars, including the Porsche Macan I drove a few weeks ago. So do check out that review as well. Now that new tech means that everything moves on from the last generation of electric cars. So the Q6 has up to 381 miles of range, faster charging than a Tesla and better efficiency than a BMW iX, which we reckon are usually the most efficient. So it's sounding pretty good so far, right? And listen to this. The Q6 can accept up to 270 kilowatts at a rapid charger. So that means in the time it takes you to watch this video, about 10 minutes, you could add 158 miles of range on a powerful enough point. Now, if you could wait a bit longer, 21 minutes, watch a longer video, it could go from 10 to 80%, which would get you more than 300 miles. Very nice indeed. Now, the key to all of this is a brand new 95 kilowatt hour usable battery. I have to show you this feature. I think you're going to really like it. I know you've seen a charging port before, but look at how that opens. That is so posh. Oh. And the other thing is, oh, there's one there, but wait for it. There's two. There's two charging ports, one on each side. That is so satisfying. That battery feeds power at 800 volts rather than the usual 400, just like a Porsche Taycan or the Hyundai Ioniq or Kia EV9. Now that means it can take on power very quickly indeed. But this is the bit I get really excited about. Even if the charging station only supplies 400 volts, the Q6 e-tron acts as if it has two batteries, which are then charged in parallel with up to 135 kilowatts, giving 270 kilowatts in total. Very sneaky, I love it. That 800 volt system also means it can take the power back during regenerative braking faster too. Audi claim around 95% of the energy can now be recovered at a rate of 220 kilowatts. So that means you get more range, sort of for free. Ginny has done a full walk around video of this car in a studio if you do want to look at the inside of this car in real detail. But here are some of the highlights. Right, take a little look inside the Q6 because it is, it's quite a nice place to be. As you would expect though from Audi, you know, that quality continues from the outside inside. Um, we've got these lovely pearl beige seats, which are really beautiful. I wouldn't let my children anywhere near them. I think I would have to go for something way more practical. Uh, but if you're lucky enough to not have kids and dirty, sticky fingers, then I would definitely recommend this color. It's so lovely um, and it feels great. Now looking around, you can instantly see this massive panoramic screen here. So we've got one, two and it is an option but if you go for it this is the first time that Audi has ever put this in a car but it is a dynamic privacy screen now this is a screen specifically for your front passenger and what is very clever about it is as soon as you start driving it switches to a special privacy screen so I can no longer view what my passenger is watching which a is obviously brilliant for you know, no distractions while you're driving, and B, allows your passenger to be, well, very private and watch whatever they want to, and I will never know, I'll be none the wiser. But what do I get to enjoy? So up front, we have a 11.9 inch screen here with a 14.5 inch screen over here. And I've got to say, I've been playing around with it. It's really intuitive. It's really nice to use. And it's got a nice little satisfying click to it. Listen to this. I don't know why. 
that little click is really satisfying. It doesn't move or anything, it's not haptic, but it just sounds great. And it's really quick, it's really responsive. One thing I am a big fan of is the navigation. The map is crystal clear. I've got it on satellite view at the moment. And it just looks amazing. The quality of this screen is really quite something. And I also have been testing out the voice control. There are 800 different controls um, that the car will recognize. And it's pretty good. There were a few things that it stumbled on, but ultimately once once we got to know each other, we kind of spoke each other's language, um, it is really easy to use. So I was getting it to change the climate control, um, give me some music, turning up the volume, using the navigation, and it all worked really well. It's quite a clever little car because it uses AI to learn what you do, to learn what you like. So for example, when you get in the car, it will set the climate to the temperature that you normally have it on, which is quite smart. It just means there's one less thing to think about when you jump in the car. You've also got lots of controls available at your fingertips, whether it be on the steering wheel, you've got the paddles behind for the regen, which is really nice. It's a nice feel to have it there. Um, and then actually on the door, you've got things like obviously locking, unlocking. You've got your lights settings, your mirror settings, your seat settings and your child lock, the crucial button to make sure you have no escapees while driving. But it's a haptic button. I know some people have a bit of a love-hate relationship. This is a haptic button I love. So the gear selector is fairly straightforward. The only downside is it's shiny and black, which means my dirty hands have already ruined it and it doesn't look very pretty. I think the one thing that I am disappointed about with the interior of this is the center console, because bearing in mind that this was built to specifically be an electric vehicle. It hasn't come from an ICE platform, and yet they still have this traditional center console. So I don't think they've necessarily maximized the amount of storage space that you could potentially use that for. Um, there is enough. I mean, you've got wireless charging down here. Uh, you've got spots for two cup holders and a, and a bin here, but it just seems like a bit of a wasted opportunity, really. Obviously you've got your usual two USB-C ports, but unusually, I haven't seen one of those for years. A lighter and an ashtray. Old school. And I like how they've brought a little bit of the outdoors indoors with you. So they've got this nice sustainable wood finish up front, which I've got to say, it does look nice. And here are the rather splendid rear seats. Um, although I must say, I thought I was going to be really excited about being back here because there's going to be so much space because of the long wheelbase. But that's not quite the case. So this is set to my driving position. And normally my test is, can I get my sort of hand span between my knees and this car seat in front? And in this case, I can't. There's, there's really only about that much gap, which is a little bit underwhelming, I've got to say. However, loads of headroom. So if you are somebody with a very long body and very short legs, this is the back seat for you. If you've got long legs and a short body, maybe not. Now, for those of you that were the youngest child and always got stuck in the middle seat, well, you should have been in a car like this because the middle seat is actually a really decent size, quite comfortable as well. So I don't think you're gonna be disappointed if you get wedged in the middle. And um, the only slightly downside to it is that you've got this center console in the middle, which projects a bit, but it's where the climate control is, uh, but it just slightly reduces your leg room. Now it comes with two Isofix back here as standard and as well as having this very useful armrest, it has this very decent size ski hatch. Oh, my lunch. I think it's time for a break. Now that boot looks pretty big. The spec sheet says 526 litres of space, which is actually less than the Model Y and I-Pace, but more than an iX3 or even the iX. It's also identical to the Polestar 4. If you fold down the seats, the storage space increases to up to 1,529 litres. There's also a further 69 litres in the frunk. Look at that. Right, let's go for a drive. So this is the Quattro version, which has two motors, one at each end, producing a total of 375 brake horsepower for your driving pleasure. Uh, 
and it does feel really good. There is lots of driving pleasure to enjoy here. And also, if you ask nicely, you get an extra 20 brake horsepower, which you can use uh, for your overtaking moves if needed. Now, 0 to 62 times, we're talking just under six seconds, 5.9 seconds. I mean, it's not gonna win you any bragging points if there's a Tesla driver around, but do you know what? Just don't hang out with them. Um, I think it's decent enough, but if it does bother you and you've got deep pockets, well, you could just go for the SQ6. The only problem is it's gonna cost you 92,950 pounds, but you can do not to 62 in 4.3 seconds. So there you go. But panic not, there is going to be a cheaper rear wheel drive option that's gonna cost you more like 60 grand view. This Quattro version starts at £69,000. So what's it like to drive? Well, I love the steering. I think the steering makes it feel really good. It's a nice, smooth drive, really responsive. Um, I think it's a bit less sporty than the Porsche Macan that we test drove quite recently, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. So if you're looking for um, a slightly less sportier car, which to be honest, if you're going for a practical family SUV, then sportiness isn't necessarily probably at the top of your priority list. So actually, I think this is great as an everyday car. Now, if you're wondering where all your money has been spent, you get fancy things like digital OLED rear lights, which have digital light signatures. What does that mean, you ask? I know, me too. Uh, basically, what it means is you can set, there are eight different settings for your rear lights, and they do a kind of fancy show for you. It's a different pattern each time, and you get to enjoy it every time you unlock your car. What's not to love about that? Now, I'm currently driving on some pretty tight, twisty, narrow roads, which is slightly terrifying given the number of cyclists that I'm having to go past. But I've also tested it on the motorway at speed. And even in those conditions, it's really quiet inside. It is a really enjoyable drive. It's smooth, it's quiet. You don't get any wind noise coming in. So I think that's a positive. Now, when it comes to regen, you've got lots of options. So there is the B button down on your gear selector, which means you can do one pedal driving, which is great. And then, nifty, just behind the steering wheel, you've got some paddles. And that will give you three different settings for the brake region. So I've just put it into the first one. Let's go up to the third. Um, and that will give you different levels of regenerative braking, depending on what you like. And there's just something nice about having paddles behind the steering wheel, isn't there? There's just something really racy and sporty about it. I really like it. Um, and the fact that it's obviously putting energy back into the battery, it's a win-win. Overall, I really like driving the Q6. It's been really easy to get to grips with. It's smooth, it's really responsive, the steering's great. And I think all of the technology that Audi have been working on and the packed into this car really benefits the driver. So is it overpriced? Well, let's look at the competition. Keeping in mind the starting price of the rear wheel drive entry level Q6 e-tron is just under £60,000 and the Quattro model is £69,000. A rear wheel drive BMW iX3 with a range of 279 miles starts at about 64000 if you look at a Jaguar I-Pace, we're talking 292 miles of range for £69,000. A Polestar 4 dual motor long range comes in at £67,000 and with that you get 367 miles of range. Or perhaps we should compare it to something a bit different. There's the much bigger Korean Kia EV9 and that starts from £65,000 for the 350 mile range single motor. So looking at those comparisons, it's looking like equal or potentially better value than the competition. I know a lot of you are going to be rolling your eyes at yet another expensive electric SUV. I get it. I hear the frustrations. But if you are in the market for spending this kind of cash, I don't think you're going to go far wrong choosing this. You know, it's actually quite extraordinary. Think back, the first few electric cars that Audi bought out, they weren't that good. They weren't very efficient. But the progress that we've seen has been amazing. And this Q6 e-tron, it moves the electric SUV game on with its charging, its efficiency and performance. And I talked through the competition earlier and I do think it actually comes out in relative terms 
okay value. Plus it's got space, the range, and it delivers that Audi quality inside and out. I'm kind of finding it hard to fault. I don't know, what do you guys think? I would love to know. Would you prefer to test the Q6 e-tron or perhaps you're more into the Porsche Macan or Polestar 4? Do let me know in the comments below.